Now, Robert Chilton, the Assistant Adjutant General, he maintained a ledger. He maintained a letter book. So that as uh, Lee's personal staff would bring to his staff copies of orders that the staff had written out at General Lee's instruction, Chilton would have A.P. Mason take that document and copy it into his own letter book. And that's what A.P. Mason did. Now, we know that A.P. Mason himself wrote out as a single piece of paper Special Order 191 with two paragraphs, paragraphs 1 and paragraph 2, and necessarily Mason then took the same document and he copied it into this letter book. And what you're looking at in front of you is in fact A.P. Mason's handwriting. There isn't any dispute about it. Now, when he started the entry into the ledger book, into the letter book, what he would have had on the page when he completed the project was only two paragraphs. He would have had headquarters, Army of Northern Virginia, September 9. He would have had Special Order 191, and he would have had paragraphs 1 and 2. And that would have been it. Then at some subsequent point, Marshall's copy, the copy that is labeled 190, and which was enclosed with the letter of September 12th to Davis, that copy necessarily was handed to A.P. Mason, and A.P. Mason opened up the letter book, and immediately would have recognized that he couldn't he couldn't write it in as 190 because on the prior page of the letter book he'd already written in a special order 190 that involved the uh, furlough of three officers who were ill and were being authorized to leave the army and return to Virginia. So whether he did it on his own, which is doubtful, or he was induced to do it by someone involved with General Lee, it's a matter of fact that A.P. Mason started to fill in the remaining blank portion of the page with paragraph 3 and continued on from paragraph 3 all the way through the end of the document. Now, how do we know that he's copying these paragraphs into the letter book from Marshall's copy? Because of Marshall's use of language in paragraph 6. And down here we have paragraph 6. Here we have paragraph 6, General Walker. And you get down to that last line that I showed you. See if we can zoom in. Here it is. Generals McLaw, Generals McLaw and Jackson and intercept retreat of the enemy as far as practical cooperate with generals McLaw and Jackson and intercept retreat of the enemy. It's exactly the same syntax that Marshall used. So it's reasonable to conclude that Mason was using 
Marshall's copy to record these paragraphs in Shulton's letter book. Now, did A.P. Mason do this on the 9th of September? Or on the 12th of September? Or some point in between? We just don't know. All we know is that he clearly used Marshall's copy and to do that he would have had to have done it before Marshall's copy was enclosed in the letter and sent off to Davis. And of course Chilton doesn't sign this. There's nothing, there's no signature here. It ends down here on this page. And all that, all that we have there is AA General, Assistant Adjutant General. That's all that we have there. Now this letter book went back to Richmond after the campaign was over. Chilton was relieved of duty with the Army of Northern Virginia. He returned to a staff position with Cooper in Richmond. He took his letter book with him. The letter book ended up in the wagon train and is now in the hands of the National Archives in its original form. It has been destroyed to some extent. A clerk sometime in the 1900s uh, realized that the letter book in fact had belonged to the Union. It had been uh, part of supplies uh, captured by the Confederates at 2nd Manassas and so he decided on his own to rip off the cardboard covers on the front and the back and he, he, he sent them off somewhere and they can't be found.